Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back, everybody. Just want to make sure. Yes, it looks like we're going. If you hear any strange noises in the background, it's the peanut gallery. It's the monkeys at the peanut gallery. Yes, yes. They just got done with a nap. Before we get going, I just want to thank everybody for your support over at Ko-Fi, where you could do a one-time donation to support the family or monthly as well. And when we do see people as far as clients go, which that is most of the hours of our work weeks, <laughs> um, we basically ask people to do their donations through Ko-Fi because of the, that ability to do a one-time donation. Uh, Patreon, we couldn't do it without you guys there too. And then please do check out Medicinal Foods. See, some of these articles are great. You know, ideas on hormone balancing diets, what to do in insomnia, um, all sorts of benefits of different mushrooms, gut health, greens. There's there's lots of good stuff in here, lots of good information. Pineal awakening protocol. If this world was full of people with fully active pineals, we would not have any of the issues we have today. Mm -hmm. Just that easy. Yes, and I absolutely love this site. If you're looking for a one-stop place, where can I awaken and how to awaken, and then also have the things to put in your body this is it this is a great site you could spend all day on it and there is a link at the top of every video taking you to our mm -hmm. little shop on medicinal foods use coupon code EEA it does get you a discount supports the channel it's said that we are living in God's dream and this is a picture of Vishnu dreaming the universe into existence mm -hmm. that's a lot of power it is, but we are all co-creators. We all have source in us. So I want to share this. This was a video we did this morning when we just got done doing some mantras. And it got cut off halfway through, which does happen. You know, it was terribly hot out there. It was all of 60 degrees and my phone overheated. It, this, this has happened even in New Mexico in the winter in the desert where it was 35 degrees out. Uh, yeah, well, you know... It's what can we say? It, it's a tool of the dark side, yes. basically. So we all know this. We all know this. So we will share this with you guys. And let me make sure I got the volume up. Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. You know, guys, we just wanted to share with you some thoughts. I was reading before going out to do mantras in the sun in the morning, which is what I love to do. Um, I was reading an article, it, it was a scientific article speaking about how scientists are finding that memories are not stored necessarily in the brain. They're not even stored in, they're not stored in the cells, they're not necessarily even stored in the brain, which is something that, you know, we know inherently. I mean, yes, you can trigger um, by stimulating certain areas of the brain, as we have Mr. Ram here. Yeah, he has to photobomb here. He's photobombing. Yep. He is big time. Um, you can't stimulate certain areas in the brain to trigger memories, but they're not truly stored in the memory, uh, in the brain, I should say. Again, they're stored in the field. And so if you haven't read, a great place to, to start this exploration is Lynn McTaggart's The Field. Um, and then also I know... Um, What's his name? David Wilcox did one. I think it was called the Source Field Explorations, Source Field, something or other. Um, Limit Taggart's was the first one I read many years ago, but I'd already read books by like Paul Davies and, and some other scientists that were very, very open um, to merging science with some ancient philosophies that we've discovered, you know, from the East mostly. Um, and there was also, what's his name from New Mexico? Um, Greg. Oh, goodness. Greg. Greg, 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 Greg Braden. Greg yes. Braden. Yes. He did a book too on um, the, the field again. We, we live in this field, so again, the, the life force itself, the chi, the ki, the prana, which is all around us, you know, this is, this is part of this field that is a field of consciousness, 
that's all around us because ultimately everything is consciousness we are individual drops of water in this ocean of consciousness and again the body is just a vehicle the body is just something that we operate to explore this density to the fullest this is not our home base this is not who we really are when you look at look down at your body you see your hands you see your feet you see your legs that's not really you that's what you're operating at this time but that is not you mm -hmm. and and if you think about it um, all of your lifetimes are wrapped up into into your vessel that you have right now so you have many things you know and I'll use traumas as an example because that's that's easy like sometimes when we're working on people Mike might get a pain in his heart I might get a pain in my leg and sometimes that's an indicator that something has happened either in this life or a past life but we're able to feel it in that field thus hitting our 3d body so this is how we can feel other people's pain because we're reading their whole energy field absolutely and you know why I'm also like fixated on this is because there's been many times when I could sense uh, well, I, I always see the life force around us. I always can sense energy. And I've shared with you certain times over the years that things that were what most people would consider unusual happened with the merging of the different densities. Uh, for instance, in, in December, early December in 2017, about four months after I had started the channel, I awoke to see, because I felt something go into my lower dantian, and I was sleeping, it was about 1 a.m., and I awoke to see a tall gray that was hunched over. Um, the bedroom had a, a cathedral ceiling, and the ceiling was maybe nine feet tall, and it was hunched over. Like, if it stood straight up, it might be too tall even to, or its head would be hitting the ceiling. It looks solid as can be. Now, it didn't expect me to wake up, um, but you know, I'm more sensitive than most, and, and I woke up and I saw it, and I watched it for over a minute as it immediately looked away from me and almost straightened up. And it went into a meditative um, expression. And it slowly turned into just a pattern of energy, very much like um, you know, when you have that snow on a TV, like the old, the old way the TVs used to be where you could get those channels that were nothing but snow. Well, that's what it turned into. Kind of like beam me up Scotty, you know, as they beam up, they just become an energy pattern, an interference pattern. Um, well, this, this morning I was having a very, very vivid dream. And it was weird because in my dream, there were... Um, mice and I was back out in the desert and there was a mouse down my shirt and a mouse in my hair and I went and grabbed the one out from my shirt <clears throat> and I, it was so real that it ended up causing me to wake up and <laughs> like toss it away from me and when I did I did actually do the physical movement from sleep it actually woke me up again but the weirdest thing was everything as far as the scenery that was around me in my dream, I still saw it. Even though I was now awake and I could see Cindy to my left, I could see the puppies around me and then I could see also what I was seeing when I was in the dream state at the same time. For about 30 seconds it lasted. So that was a little bit unusual. And I think it's part of our merger of the dimensions because right now we we are still most of us are still in 3d most of the time there are some people that are are in 4d a good por portion of the time I, when we do fall asleep or if we get into a deep meditative state you know then we are also going up into 4d some might be able to go up into higher densities if you're very well trained and you've spent a lot of time uh, in meditation so it just hit me as so cool and that that residue of the of the dream was still right there in the field in front of me and that made me just feel like I was watching the field my consciousness was manifesting this 
this reality is what it was doing. And I was still seeing it. I was seeing two things at once, two different densities at the same time. So I just thought it was super cool and I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, some of you, I saw comments recently, were saying, how do you communicate with your guides? Well, typically Cindy and I will go into a quiet zone whenever the puppies are asleep nowadays um, because, you know, they are so active so much of the time. And we'll do mantras until Cindy is uh, under and not always under sometimes she gets like halfway under where she's still you know awake and and cognizant other times she's totally under and i could recognize that i could see rapid eye movement going on and and i'll recognize it and then at that point i'll basically say uh, our keyword and then the guys will come through and start communicating through her either with total consciousness or a semi-consciousness. When the guides come, I see them as energy forms. So again, that interference type of pattern, again, the snow on a TV set, the difference is with the guides, um, they have a very, very certain color to them that lets me know exactly that it's them, a very high vibrational color and I could see their forms with my uh, physical eyes as well as the third eye. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and when you're working with energy patterns, say you're working on someone doing energy work on them, I look at them and I see the swirls of energy. I don't see the 3D body. I see the swirls of energy and in and, and many cases, most cases, I see these little uh, black tangled looking issues around their body where there's been some kind of trauma or maybe even they fell as a child and even if it's not from this life these can be issues from past life that carry on in your energy field from one lifetime to the next and many times when I'm hello our friends evolutionary so, energy <clears throat> so that's where it cut off guys when the phone overheated in 60 degree temperature yes yeah, fairly common oh yeah it's you gotta laugh so this is the article that I was talking about, memory found to lean more on the brain's electric field than on neurons. Now, scientists in modern science will also tell you that, you know, we're basically a chemical reaction that gives off a field. And when the body dies, the field's not there anymore. Well, yeah, when the body's dead, consciousness moves away from it, it's no longer useful. But we're still there. Our consciousness is still there. This is where, again, that science has it kind of inside out or backwards, so to speak. And this is why so many doctors think that they can treat us with chemicals because they think we're like a chemical thing. And if we just alter those chemicals, we can make the body function better. But we are an electric field. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's, it's recognized in part of the basis for traditional Chinese medicine from which you get acupuncture, uh, acupressure, and a lot of other things is that disease is disease caused by inability to process certain emotions, emotional trauma. And so this is the article that that other article is quoting from. Beyond dimension reduction, stable electric fields emerge from and allow representational drift. Interesting, interesting to see how the more we go into it, especially, you know, now that we understand quantum physics a little bit better than we obviously. Quantum physics is a relatively new science and it really emerged in, well, with Einstein and Max Planck and, you know, the 1920s, 1930s, it started to come to the forefront. And we see here, can quantum physics neuroscience merge as quantum consciousness? And the quantum world behaves very weird. And it shows us that it's all about consciousness. When consciousness is present and observing something, it changes what is there. What is there starts to manifest. What is there before is just kind of, it's an interference pattern. It's... It's just a blank slate, so to speak. It's consciousness that makes it take form. 
One thing the guides come through time and time again, they talk about they don't want to interfere with the human experience. They don't want to interfere with our experience because this is our experience and, and not, I don't think any two people see the world exactly alike. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Perception is such a huge part of this and how we change our perception as we, as we grow, as we go through happy times, as we go through sad times, our perception is forever changing and no two perceptions are exactly alike. Exactly. You know, this is just, it's fascinating to get to and get into. And what's happening is that now science is starting to verge with what the ancient mystery traditions and what was known in the East has always thought about the world. Again, we, we started out by talking about this being the dream of Vishnu, this being the dream of God. And that's what we are taught in Hinduism. And in, in Buddhism, what was Buddha's big revelation? Everything is Maya. Everything is an illusion of sorts. It only appears real. And ultimately, everything is one. So we had talked about books, and you know, this is just this. This might be a this was a one sitting book for me. I just couldn't put it down. It it wasn't foreign to my line of thinking. It was just basically giving me so much more confirmation on what I had always kind of believed and got from other sources. Very very easy read. Um, heartily recommend it. And that, again, is Lynn McTaggart, The Field. Just good stuff, good stuff. And this comes from that. At our most elemental, we are not a chemical reaction, which is what Cindy was sa said, and she didn't know no. anything I've put up here. She lets me do all that stuff. He's awesome too. <laughs> but it's an energetic charge. Life, you know, we are electromagnetic beings. And the chemical side of thing is is the result of the electromagnetic part. And here you're, you're seeing, she's given many, many talks. This is just one slide showing cellular memory. Emotion remains in the cell. Trauma imprinted as cancer healing at the cellular level. This is why it's so important to be sending positive signals to the body. When you go to eat, charge your food. Whatever, if you want to say a formal prayer, whether that's Christian, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, whatever, whether you just simply want to visualize it as being healthy and good for the, your mind, body, and spirit, and at the same time have that gratitude and thankfulness for it, and maybe as our indigenous Americans would do, is say a prayer for the spirit of that which you're eating, because even if you're just having a vegetable uh, soup, it still is consciousness. Mm -hmm. Plants are conscious. Everything is conscious. Mm -hmm. it, it is. And, you know, healing at the cellular level is so, so important because our cells are always listening. The energy field is kind of like this silent listener. So the way we talk to ourselves really, really matters. And... I don't know if you guys have ever heard of, of charging your water with love or happiness and joy, but you absolutely can. You can hold your glass of water, you can hold a signature of love in your mind, and you can charge that water with love. And you drink it. And I tell you, it is life-changing. It can really, really help. It can really help you um, change your life. It can help you change your perception, the way you understand things. It's something that when I discovered I didn't realize how life-changing it would be and it really is as simple as holding that water now I would put it in like glass or stainless steel because I don't think the plastics are very safe at all no matter no matter what they say you know I just wouldn't put it in plastic to do especially the charging and to go a further step if you want to continue to learn and understand more about how you can charge your water uh, take a look at Dr. Emoto's work because he explains how this is done in great detail. And this was the source field investigations by David Wilcock as well. And the Divine Matrix by Greg Braden. I mean, these three all came out pretty close to the same time, I want to say. 
Um, very good, easy uh, for the layman reads. The Mind of God is a good book um, by Paul Davies. Very, very interesting scientific basis for a rational world. And then we could get into some things that will really perhaps even open your mind a little bit more. This is Angel Tech. This is a modern shaman's guide to reality selection about choosing your own reality. And also um, there's guided meditations for undoing all the programming <laughs> that we've had because we, our whole lives have been programming. And one person that recognizes that is Robert Anton Wilson. And he's done many, many fascinating, interesting books. Very, very thought-provoking. Very, very, um, well, they have a high shock value. It's kind of like he's, you know, throwing ice water on your consciousness, so to speak. And this is a quote from him. I do not believe anything. Most people, even the educated, think that, Everybody must believe something or other. That if one is not a theist, one must be a dogmatic atheist. If one doesn't think that capitalism is perfect, one must believe fervently in socialism. If one does not have blind faith in X, then one must alternatively have blind faith in not X. Or the reverse of X. My own opinion is that belief is the death of intelligence. Think about that. Belief is the death of intelligence. Good stuff. That's really, that really is striking. That's something that kind of hits you at your core. I love all of it. Isn't belief like, in some ways, isn't it the stepping stone to being planted in cement? Mm -hmm. Because we have to always be open to perhaps greater knowledge, greater experience. And here he has another quote. The Bible tells us to be like God, and then on page after page, it describes God as a mass murderer. This may be the single most important key to the political behavior of Western civilization. Bingo. Thank you. Exactly. Exactly. You know, when, when you look deeper, you start to recognize the programming. And it's all about undoing that programming. And so, you know, Cosmic Trigger was a famous book of his there, The Final Secret of the Illuminati, and many others. He has this book on Crowley and quantum psychology. Prometheus Rising is probably his most famous one. We, we still have a copy of that as well. It's all about recognizing just how programmed we are by our belief systems of every sort. And yet people still won't let go of certain belief systems. They've just fear. And it is. It's, it's controlled by fear. Mm -hmm. You've been told. And, and my mother, you know, again, is a, a lady that even, even at 90 years old, she would still make it to church. Yet she didn't believe in it. <laughs> it was just habit. It was just indoctrination when she was close to death. And I would say to her things like, you know, when you're on the other side, I'll be able to feel you. I'll be able to sense you. You're going to be fine. You're just going to find that you've stepped out of your body. You'll probably see your body there. And, you know, you'll probably see my dad shortly thereafter. And she would say things like, well, I don't know. And I would say to her, well, I do. And, and you will. You'll see. And I was standing doing meditation in Nevada uh, when she started to slip away. And I could feel her tug on my chin because I have some facial hair. And she hated facial hair because my father was always clean cut, totally, all the time. So it was her little way of telling me she was starting to uh, go on to the other side. And we knew when she had passed before anybody told us because we could sense it. And Cindy could see her. I could sense her. And... Uh, you know, she was happy to be out of the body because she was able to dance and move about freely again. Consciousness always is. And again, as we started with, Hindu mythology presents the world as a dream of the god Vishnu. Yeah, it's it's the dream of, of God, as we, we've said. And then there is one source, but there are many gods, so to speak. Many different levels. And, you know, one message that we 
got from Vishnu himself when Sindhi was channeling Vishnu is exactly what Yeshua did say. Don't you know ye are gods? He really did want people to understand that. Understand that you are a creator in your own right. Everything around you. You know, you have your own kingdom. You uh, you put your own thoughts out there. You put your own energies out there. And this is what you have created. And we all can create our own surroundings. That's so important to hold on to. And remember that. Because sometimes we're in really crummy situations but guess what we have the ability to change it absolutely and again source is within us god is within us every being that's inside the dream of vishnu has vishnu in them Mm -hmm. so it, it only stands to reason so couldn't anybody given the time and the practice channel vishnu it's possible sure but again it, it depends on, on your practice. It depends on, you know, what you're taking into your body and what your day looks like and the energies that you're subjected to. These times are amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, we, we already uh, talked today to quite a few family members, and they're having experiences that are just completely perception-altering. One of our family members uh, that we talk to every every second week, you know, she thought she was maybe getting ready. I think she thought she was getting ready to go to the other side because this world was kind of melting in front of her. She was like noticing things all of a sudden change. And she's thinking, am I going crazy? Am I getting ready to go to the other side? No, it's because we're having a dimensional merger right now. Where we are on 3D and where we are going to be in 4D, it's just a hair's breadth away. So many people are starting to see 3 and 4D kind of going back and forth, kind of wavering. Get used to it. This is what's going to be our reality for a while. Right. So grounding is probably the number one thing you can do when you're integrating the energies that have been set forth, especially these ones lately. Grounding and uh, allowing these energies to permeate and affect affect you in a positive way is really, really important right now. Uh, two, two new guides have uh, come forward and, and are joining our collective of the ones that we work with and channel on a regular basis. And we'll be sharing more with you because, again, they're, all these beings on the higher densities, they are so eager to welcome humanity back home into the higher densities. You know, the time that we spend, thankfully, uh, in the Kali Yuga is the shortest period of time. We're in the darkness the shortest amount of time. And so we are going to be leaving the darkness. That's the good part. That is the good part. That's the future. We're going to be leaving uh, uh, this whole structure, this whole dark matrix and so more and more of these benevolent beings we're going to be able to be in contact with on a regular basis and they're the ones that tell us how the universe works and tell us how to better ourselves and to live in harmony in a manner with our environment and every other being which is constructive and not destructive so these are the last years of the destructive matrix that we have found ourselves in so, you know, hold your hopes up mm-hmm. and your focus up. Uh, we, you know, times are going to be a challenge. That's absolutely sure. But the more we can grasp and recognize that we are creating our own reality and move past that negative programming that has programmed into us nothing but death and destruction and chaos and war and bloodshed and you name it, the, the faster we could move out of this paradigm. Mm-hmm. Yes, we can we can do it. And to think otherwise is just giving away all your power. So think as positive as possible in every situation and create your own reality. Absolutely. As always, God bless and namaste. Namaste.